Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. We are live on Facebook. Of course, you know that because you are also on Facebook watching. Uh, welcome to, I think this is episode 19 of Ask Carrot that, of course, we record blah, 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 right here live on Facebook. What's up, Daniel? Thanks for joining, man. Good to see you. Uh, I am Kylie Newbold. Uh, I think most of you probably know my face, but those of you that don't, I joined the Carrot team um, officially in January, but have been a partner with Carrot for a long time and uh, also was part of, uh, ran a business called Silver Street Marketing, which you might have heard of as well. But I am super excited to be here with you today. We are talking about something that I am crazy excited about, and that is building and scaling a business. Uh, lots of challenges, lots of fun, pitfalls, tools, mindset challenges, all that kind of stuff. So what's up, Jose? Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining. Um, if you guys know people who might enjoy this, might benefit from it, please share it up. Hit that share. Hit some likes. Give me some love. I'll, I'll be honest. I feed off of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Um, appreciate all you guys being here so much. And um, we are going to... Uh, we're going to get started here in just a second. Now, if you have questions, you can ask them right in the comments. And those questions can be, they can be about what we're talking about. If they're not what we're talking about, that's okay too. I'll do my best to answer them. You can uh, ask me questions um, about just about anything. We'll do our best to answer it. That's what we're here for. We're here for you. This is Ask Carrot. And... Um, we want your feedback. We want your insight. We want to know that this has benefit and value to you. What's up, Pete? Pete has joined. Man, now the party can start. Pete's here. I love it. Pete just got back from a epic dive trip. Um, pretty jealous. Had some really cool photos. Good for you, man. Disconnect and recharge. It's important. So as I was getting ready to to present some of this information for you guys today, I actually created a bunch of slides because we were originally going to run this as maybe a uh, YouTube live video and then just post it over here on Facebook. But I'll tell you what we decided. We decided that we wanted to do this live on Facebook because we love you guys and it gives you the chance to engage a little bit more. Also gives us the chance to engage with you during the call. Um, but uh, I'm not, but I'm not going to share slides. So what that means is I, I'm going to be talking a lot and I'm going to do my very best to keep you guys engaged and interested and, and make sure that this is awesome for you. But I want your feedback, please ask questions, comment, and I will engage with you as this video goes on. Um, that that's what we're here for. And, and that's why we're doing this. So without further ado, Let's let's jump into this, guys. I want to talk, like I said, we're going to talk today about building a business. So um, well, just, just kind of a little bit of background on me quickly. I, I've been part of, of building a, a couple of businesses in my day. Um, I, I was part of the color run as we went from zero to uh, about $70 million in annual revenue. We had events in... Uh, on every continent in the United States, except Antarctica, which was awesome. And uh, that that growth happened really fast. It happened over the period of uh, about 18 months. And man, we experienced a lot of crazy challenges, a lot of crazy adventures. And um, right after I right after my experience with the Color Run, I started my own ad agency, which also grew really quickly. I had originally intended it to be a single man operation, just something to do for me while I kind of uh, figured out what I wanted to do next and uh, generate some revenue and uh, that thing scaled as well. And now, of course, uh, I've come to join Carrot and I've joined Carrot at a really awesome time where it's in a period of growth and seeing how it's continuing to grow as as well. So we're going to talk about um, scaling your business. This is a question we get all the time from investors and from agents just asking for advice. How do I grow? What do I what do I do? If you're a single man operation, you can only grow so much, right? Before you hit a certain threshold. We've got some guys watching this call right now, Daniel, for example, who are experts at this as well. So Daniel, if you got tips and feedback, man, feed them in here. And if there's anyone else, I can't I can't see everyone watching. Just uh, just uh, saw that Daniel had commented. If you have tips, feedback, share them because we'll take them, and and we want everyone here to benefit from it. So. 
Here, here's the first thing I want to say when you're thinking about scaling your business or growing your business. I want you to ask yourself, why? I think all too often the answer to that question, if you don't take time to think about it, the, ans the answer to your question is also your question. What I mean by that is a lot of people grow simply to grow or they grow because that's what you're supposed to do with a business or because that's what's next. Uh, I, I would argue that that is a bad reason to grow your business or an unsustainable reason to grow your business. So really take a second and ask yourself, why, why do I want to grow? And if you, and if your answer is, I want to achieve more success, then I would challenge you again to say, well, what is success? Have you defined success for yourself personally? If not, you need to do that. You need to think about why, why do I want this business to grow? Why do I want this business to scale? It can be a lot of reasons, and I'm not here to tell you what those reasons should or shouldn't be, but you need to have one. And not just simply because I want a bigger business. Because I promise you, as you get into the trenches and the challenges of growing a business, you will need that why. You will come back and look at that why because you'll need it, man. Motivation only lasts so long. Motivation fades over time. It gets, uh, it's, like a, it's like a fire that gets lit under you. You get excited, but as soon as you start grinding and working and things get difficult, you hit challenges, roadblocks, issues, that motivation starts to fade and you need something else that can carry you through. And that is going, that, that's your why. That's your vision. That's, that's your discipline. When motivation fades, discipline starts to carry. And discipline is what's going to carry you through. The other thing I would challenge you to do is think about your non-negotiables. And if you've hung around us for very long or you know much of Trevor's stuff, Trevor talks about this all the time. And uh, you, can, you can find information about what, what he says about non-negotiables. He's talked about it in the Carrot Cast, on the Carrot Blog. These are the things that you are not willing to negotiate on or things that you want your business to do for you. If you're not careful, raise your hand virtually if you've ever been stuck in a business that you were a servant to versus a business that served you. That happens. Happens to all of us. Um, you might even be in that right now. And, and if you are, I, I hope this can help you get out of it. But part, part of the way you avoid that is with these non-negotiables is knowing what you're willing to accept from your business and what you're not willing to accept for your business. The last thought I have before we jump into um, actually scaling your business is thinking about what you're willing to sacrifice to do that. Setting goals is actually, I think, the easy part. Writing them down on paper, oh, well, I want to hit X in sales. Uh, next, the hard, the, the next harder part is, is deciding why, which we just talked about. And then the last piece to this is deciding what am I willing to sacrifice or what am I willing to do to get there? This is right in tandem with those non-negotiables. If you have your non-negotiables in place, you know what you are or aren't willing to do in order to achieve your goal. Uh, thinking about this upfront is helpful. Now you're certainly going to hit things that will tell you, um, you, you certainly will hit things that maybe you didn't anticipate or things will impact you in a way you didn't anticipate and you may have to reassess, but uh, I, I would encourage you to know what you're willing to sacrifice. Setting a goal is easy. I want to run a marathon. Okay, great. What are you willing to sacrifice to do that? Are you willing to sacrifice time, comfort, late night pizza and ice cream parties. I, I don't know. I'm just making stuff. I'm making stuff up a little bit, but you, you got to think about what you're willing to sacrifice. Same is true with, with any goal and especially with growing a business. And re remember, remember this as you're thinking about your why the future is never a solution to your present. If there are issues right now in your business, uh, in your life, no future event will guarantee the removal of those issues or guarantee more happiness. Certainly there are things that as we achieve them, they give us, they will provide us uh, some more happiness or some more joy, but inevitably there will be different issues, different challenges that pop up. So again, you can't grow your business simply because you want to grow your business. You, I, I take that back. You can, I would encourage you not to. Um, because you will have challenges. The future is never a solution to your present. All right. 
So when you start scaling a business, what happens? Number one, you expose weaknesses. You frustrate communication. You disrupt processes. You increase stress and you magnify risk. There might be more, but those are the one, two, three, four, five that I have identified. Um, exposing weakness, frustrating communication, disrupting processes, increasing stress, and magnifying risk. Um, but talk, talk about that a little bit. So a lot of times what happens is you, you'll start to lose some of your unified vision because you get busy. People start to cut corners and because they're so busy, right? You might get a fragmented or a frantic team and pe you, you now have, um, you, you've lost some team cohesiveness or maybe you've lost some morale and motivation. Uh, you might get repetition of issues. So people aren't learning, they're just repeating the same issues over and over again. And uh, you, might, you might start to be a victim of legacy thinking, meaning you're doing things the way you've always done them just, just because that's the way that's always worked. And uh, as you scale, everywhere you turn is a new problem. That's, that's one of the things I love about it is it, it forces you to grow every single day. And that's why most of you are here, right? That's why most of you are doing what you're doing because you're not content with simply plugging into a system and, and clocking in, clocking out. Um, but as you scale a business, man, that becomes so prevalent and, and relevant is this idea that everywhere you turn is a new challenge. So the way you look at those challenges and actually see them as opportunities uh, is, is crucial. Uh, I, I remember we were at a critical point of growth at the Color Run, and um, man, we we had a lot of problems from the outside. You from the outside, you probably wouldn't see it, and that's almost always the case. But internally, man, we we had a lot of challenges, a lot of problems, a lot of things going on. Stress was high, and I was sitting down with a team a team member of mine, and they were talking about all their challenges and all their problems and roadblocks that they had, and how those things were preventing them from doing their job and it was creating a lot of stress from them. And right there in that moment, I had this realization that I was so excited. I shared it with him. I said, all of those things that you just listed out, all of those challenges, problems, issues that are standing in the way of doing your job, those aren't in the way of doing your job. Those are your job. We are not a company without problems. We are a company full of awesome problem solvers. And that realization hit me as I was saying it and hit her as, as I was saying it to her, it, it hit us both really hard. It's so easy to get wrapped up in challenges, problems and say, man, all of these things are just standing in the way of me achieving success and me getting where I wanna go. But that's, that's a lie. Because as soon as those problems and challenges are gone, there's no magic happiness on the other side of that. And more challenges and more issues will pop up. We have to shift our mindset to think about those challenges as not something to get past so that we can get to some imaginary finish line, but those are things that are part of the process. That's part of our job, that's part of what we do. You guys know that as entrepreneurs, we're problem solvers. Does your team know that? Does your team know that a big part of their job is solving problems? Even, even uh, your lower skilled positions, guys, they're going to have challenges and issues pop up. So what is their mindset about those? All right. Um, let, let's come back to, to vision for a second because your why that we talked about a few minutes ago is going to lead to your, your vision. And your vision is comprised of your non-negotiables. It's also comprised of your promise. What is the promise that you make to people who interact with you in your business? It should be a simple promise, but a serious contract. What should people expect? Uh, what, what type of experience should they expect to have? And, and the importance of thinking about that now is because as you scale, you'll want to, you'll need that number one to lean on as an anchor, but number two, you have to watch to make sure that that doesn't change over time, that simple promise. That's why a lot of, you'll see a lot of businesses that start out so great and then over time they start to struggle because they have lost sight of what their promise was to their customers. Or maybe they've gotten frantic and fragmented or maybe they've started to cut corners um, or cut costs in places that they shouldn't be cutting costs. So what is that simple promise yet really important uh, serious contract. 
Remember that your customers are your best consultants. If you're uh, not asking for feedback from your customers, start today. And when you get that feedback, take it seriously. What are they saying about the process? What are they saying about why they worked with you? What, what could you have done to make the process more simple for them? Those things, those things matter, especially as you are scaling your business. Um, I've heard it said before, I'm not sure who said this, the best way to build a brand is by making and keeping promises. I love it. So simple. The best way to build a brand is by making and keeping promises. And I believe it, you guys. I mean, there's obviously a lot that goes into brand building, something I'm also very passionate about. But the best way to do it is to just make and keep your promises. Keep keep making them and keeping them over and over again. People will start to uh, uh, pay attention. All right. Um, <laughs> Jonathan says, what a treat. I get to watch you twice a day. Uh, you're awesome, man. Appreciate it. Um, Oh, Jose, you got a question. Let me pause for a second and look at this. Sorry, guys, I hadn't scrolled down in my comments. He says, what marketing channels to upscale wholesale business, Facebook, AdWords, direct marketing? Jose, that's a big question, man. Um, and the answer is there's, there's a lot of ways to approach it. Obviously, at Carrot, we're very passionate and believe in the value of um, having a really good website and inbound marketing built around that. So uh, I, would recommend, I would recommend starting there. And uh, if you want to start spending money, then I know I know online marketing best. So you might get different feedback from different people depending on where you ask. But uh, if I were to, the things that you listed out there, I would start with SEO and get that going because it's a it's a longer tail, longer term process. Then I'd probably go AdWords. Then I'd probably go Facebook after that. Uh, and with the caveat of throwing some retargeting with Facebook in with your AdWords and then adding prospecting uh, later on. And so some of that depends on your budget too, man, Jose. That, and actually, um, Brady, if you could help me out here, maybe in the comments answer, Jose, there was an Ask Carrot a few episodes ago um, that, a that Adrian and Trevor did where they basically answered this question of um, something along the lines of, if I, if I were to start all over again, how would I start? And they they talked about some really awesome stuff in there, Jose, that I think could be really valuable for you. So we'll we'll try to find that, ask Carrot, and link it up for you. Um, I think that'd be a valuable one for you to watch. Okay, awesome. So I'm scrolled down now, guys, in the comments. So if you have other questions, um, please please uh, feed them in here. I love it. Okay, let's talk about what happens to your team as you're starting to scale. So when it's just you, what do you do? Everything. Uh, it's the way it is. <laughs> Uh, that's that's the entrepreneur life, the solopreneur life. And which, by the way, if that's what you love and your business is doing what doing what you want it to do and it's feeding your passion, that's okay. That you don't have to scale, right? But if you want to scale, here's what's going to happen to your team. Over time, depending on how team your big your team gets, you will start to need specialization. So, for example, let's say you hire an acquisitions manager. You've already started with some specialization. You used to do everything. Now you have one, one person that does just one thing, acquisition. There's a lot of things inside of acquisition, but they own that area. Now, what if you hire a dispositions manager? Now you have two people that are specialized. Now you hire some, a lead manager. Now you hire some cold callers. Whatever you're doing, you're going to start to create specialization. So where you used to be one cohesive thing, you're going to start to create specialization, which can lead to silos and segmentation. Uh, so you, there's something that that's just something to be aware of that that segmentation in those silos are, are going to happen. That's just the nature of it. And being aware of that is going to help you identify issues that come from that. There's, uh, there's a benefit in that because specialization is vital as you scale. You need people who are specialized in these certain areas, but you want to also be aware that they're not getting so siloed that they're losing sight of the overall vision. Sometimes what you'll find is that people will be so trapped in what they do that they lose sight of the overall vision or how their decision might impact another area of the company. Uh, and that's that, that's that silo effect that you want to be aware of. Uh, a couple of tips I have that I think help the, that help uh, prevent those silos from forming. Number one, nobody is too good to do anything. 
That's my, one of my personal mottos is that if you're on the team, you're not too good to do something. Now that doesn't mean that we, uh, everyone just does everything, but if something needs to get done and it, it's, it's okay to roll up your sleeves and jump in and get it done. Um, that also could help members of your team better respect and understand what other team members go through. Number two, we win and lose as a team. That's it. We're a team. If we win, we won together. If we lose, we lose together. And it's my job as a manager, a business owner, that if I have a weak link on the team, I take care of it. It's not the weak link. It's not the weak link's fault. It's my fault, right? We win as a team. We lose as a team. Uh, and then the other one is making sure to, to think about the difference between teaching a task and empowering people to make decisions. Teaching tasks is actually easier than empowering people to make decisions. And, uh, but one of them will allow you to scale and the other one will, uh, you, you will be able to hire people, but scaling will be more difficult. Uh, as you empower people to make decisions, you give them the ability to own their area of responsibility and to move faster and it removes you as a bottleneck. All right. Let's go to number two, which is, or maybe number three, I don't know. <laughs> nope, that's stress management. Good old stress. My old, my old friend, stress. Did you know that stress physically changes your brain? It's true. I read it on the internet. <laughs> uh, no, but really, there, there have been studies that have been done that show how stress can change your brain. And it actually increases your threat perceptors. So that basically how you perceive threats. Raise your hand virtually or give me a comment if you have ever noticed when you're stressed that you are more anxious or more irritable. That is, that is those threat perceptors on high alert. So something might happen or someone might do something or say something that when you're at a, a more normal state of mind, you would respond differently than when you are stressed. When you're stressed, you see that as a threat and your first reaction is to react like it's a threat. And that, that starts to happen inside your team. That starts to happen as team members interact with customers because scaling a business is hard work and it gets busy and it gets stressful and there's lots of things to remember and lots of things to do. So simply being aware that stress can change your brain and increase your threat perceptors is step one in identifying that and working to not allow that to happen to you, to allow those, to allow that stress and that threat to change your brain. Uh, oops, sorry guys, just got to scroll here. I want to make sure I, I cover everything. Um, this, this is one I love. Assume the best in one another. That, that, that I think is a big mindset shift, especially when stress is present. If someone says something or does something, someone on your team, uh, assume, assume the best, give them the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, if something is wrong, take quick action and fix it. But uh, you're, if you're stressed, your first reaction, unless you're mindful and work to change this, your first reaction will often be worst case scenario. Stress does that to the brain. Puts us in fight or flight. And we have to work actively to stay out of that fight or flight um, mindset. All right, let's talk about patterns and processes. The, there's a law in thermodynamics, the law of entropy, which very high level, and there's someone out there who is smarter than me that will hear this and say, wow, he did not explain that well. So I <laughs> apologize to you in advance. Basically, the idea of entropy that is as something goes forward in time, the amount of net disorder entropy will increase. So long story short, as time marches on, it is the natural order of things for disorder or chaos to uh, come into that, that thing, right? If you think about it on a very, um, you can think about it on a very micro level, like here on my arm, I have skin cells that are dying, right? So, um, and, and they need to be, 
they need to be sent away. Um, and then, and then you zoom out a little bit and you say, okay, I've got some light bulbs in my office that are maybe going bad. And the foundation of this building is slowly weakening very, very slowly, but it is weakening over time. And there's a water leak that's starting somewhere that eventually is going to become a big water leak. And then you zoom out even further and you say, uh, the city's infrastructure is, um, getting, getting stressed because more and more people are moving in. It's so long story short, things things don't stay constant they either they either at minimum uh they at minimum they they gain disorder right so in your business that is also the case and uh, i bring that up only because of patterns and processes and how important those are when you're scaling the patterns will form whether you want them to or not think about a volcano as a volcano erupts and lava is spewing out the top of this thing, the lava hits the ground and it starts flowing down the mountain. As it starts flowing down the mountain, the lava does not have a path yet. It is simply following gravity and creating that path. What happens once the first stream of lava has gone down the mountain? Now there's a path that's been carved in that mountain. So future lava... Uh, you can think about this with rivers too. They are more likely to follow that same path down. Now we're, we're leaving we're leaving thermodynamics here and just talking about how how uh, how we follow pot- patterns and processes in our lives. And those happen whether we want them to or not. So if you're not paying attention to patterns and processes in your business, trust me, they're already there. They just are. So your challenge is to pay attention to them. Some of the greatest discoveries in human life have come because someone has recognized a pattern, a pattern in nature, a pattern in science, whatever it is, and some uh, discovery has come out of that. So while you're scaling, you're going to be like a kid in an opportunity candy store where instead of candy, it's opportunity. There's going to be so many different things going on that you could say, oh my gosh, I could do that. Whoa, look at that. I could do that. Here's your challenge. Look for patterns and processes. Pay attention to the ones that seem to matter most. And even if there are multiple that seem to matter, you got to pick. Okay, call it shiny object syndrome. I know that's a phrase a lot of people love to use. Um, it, it, you've got to pick and focus on what, uh, what pattern seems to have the most potential impact for your business. Um, and and you got to analyze while moving. Depending on how quickly you want your business to scale, a lot of people get stuck in analysis paralysis where they just want to analyze and analyze and analyze and they see so many opportunities, they don't know which one is the right one to take. So they're going to keep analyzing and try to wait for perfect data. Perfect data, you guys, unless you're in a laboratory setting and even then sometimes perfect data just does not exist. Uh, Well, it exists, but obtaining it is very, very difficult, very, very time consuming. And like I said, you're probably not going to get there. So you gather as much data as you can, you analyze while you're moving, and then you use focus and prioritization Uh, to move through those. If you're willing to test and then deploy, you can correct from mistakes very quickly. So what I mean by that is if you're going to test something new, rather than taking it and testing it across the entire board, maybe you test just a little segment. So I'm going to test a new type of uh, postcard or a new PPC ad. So maybe instead of testing it, maybe change, you don't change every single ad to be this new test ad, right? You take, you test an area. If it works, then you scale it. Same thing's true inside of all of your in all areas of your business. Test and then deploy. If you follow that method and you analyze while you're moving, you're going to get away from that analysis paralysis. And yes, everything you do will not be a home run. It's just the way it is, uh, and that's okay. You're going to learn quickly because you're constantly analyzing, uh, and be willing to disrupt your own process. Uh, again, we're talking about the lava, right? Just because the lava has always flown down the mountain in a certain way does not mean that that is the most efficient way. Also, as you scale and as you grow, the way you did things in the past may not be sustainable anymore. So think about how you can disrupt your own, uh, your own process. And as you're going through all of this, what um, in the back of your mind always is, how would I teach this? And this is something I would I would have each member of my team think about as well, is how would I teach this? As I'm creating a new process, as I'm learning something new, as I'm testing something, how would I teach this? Um, 
was I, what I found is when you go to scale a business, often what's missing are documented processes and that can be painful and challenging to, uh, that would be painful. That can be painful and challenging to go back and document all those processes. So if you're doing that as you go, uh, it saves you a bit of time. Um, let's see. I'm getting to the end here, guys. I'm moving quickly, and I hope this is working. Again, like I said, I, I originally thought maybe I'd use some slides, but then realized mate, that's not going to work real great on Facebook Live. So if I'm glossing over stuff or this isn't making sense, please ask questions. Or if you have feedback, I, I would love to know what's worked for you in scaling your business. What's a challenge been in scaling your business? Um, I want to know those things, guys. Let's let's talk about them. Um, And uh, it just, just a couple other things. We call this the lightning round of things. I didn't quite know where to put them. One of them is uh, disconnect and recharge. So at the very beginning of this call, I was talking to Pete. I don't know if you're still on here, man, but Pete just took some time off, went with his wife down to dive, do something that they love. I think that's so important. Um, and luckily, most I think most people are starting to embrace this more and more. Um, this hasn't always been the case, and I'm not a I'm not an old guy. I'm older than maybe most people sometimes think, but uh, I can still remember sitting in a performance review um, in my early 20s, and my boss looked across the table at me and told me that I one of the reasons I was one of the basically marks on my performance review is that during the time that I took off to be with my wife during the birth of our son. I was not available enough to help uh, with issues and challenges and things that came up. Um, by the way, that was a very good sign to me that I should leave, which I did not too long after that, um, because that's that wasn't the type of company I wanted to to or the the type of boss I wanted to work for. Um, people, there are people out there that still have that mindset that have a really hard time disconnecting, or you take vacation but you don't really disconnect. If you're on your phone the whole time you're on vacation, man, you're not disconnected. And uh, I, I'm a firm believer that you got to disconnect and recharge. Whatever that means for you could mean could mean lots of different things for lots of different people. Uh, because business business isn't life. Uh, there's a lot more to life. Now you might have a business, and you might be in a stage in your life where there's a lot of things that happen inside of your business that that give you fulfillment in life. But uh, um, growth for the sake of growth very rarely leads to long-term satisfaction. Pick good partners, man. That makes, that makes all the difference. And I'm not just talking partners that can give you something there. You can get something from them. Just pick good friends, good partners, good people you can talk to. I know for me personally, um, right now on my mind, carrot camp, uh, as Carrot Camp is coming up in September, um, I'm thinking about some of the guys that are coming out to Carrot Camp already, some of the people that have been to past Carrot Camps. And I tell you what, like I've made meaningful connections and friends uh, at, at, at events like that. So these are, these are people that, yeah, maybe I might do business with them one day uh, on a personal level. I mean, they're Carrot customers, so we do business with them now through Carrot. Um, but there's no... There's no um, there's no personal agenda there, right? It's just it's just about being connected with really great, great people. Now, inside a business, you want great partners too, partners who are going to accelerate your business, partners who are trustworthy and reliable, and that's, that's so important that you pick good, good partners. All right, you guys, I want to keep this uh, close to 30 minutes. We're just a couple minutes over. Um, I appreciate the heck out of you. Thanks for being here with me. If you have any last minute or additional questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, criticism, whatever you want to put in the comments, um, I am I am here for it. Throw them in there, and uh, let's um, let's uh, let's chat about it. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a fantastic Thursday. Go forth with purpose. And we'll talk to you next time. See ya.